Hey there, in this week's episode, I am gonna talk about how to do copywriting for tough audiences, which I'll define in a minute. But I first wanna say welcome. Obviously, it's a solo episode this week. It's just me, Linda Malone, talking about all things copywriting, specifically, how do you write for tough audiences where copy needs to be extra sensitive and you need to really know a thing or two so you don't offend anybody, okay? So let's just jump right in. Yeah, I wanted to illustrate a little bit of what I'm talking about. So the first thing is defining tough. What do I mean by tough? I was gonna say sensitive audiences. Basically, I'm talking about sensitive subjects. And specifically, I wanna gear most of the conversation today to like fitness and health topics. So I have written for a lot of different health and fitness audiences. And the thing is that if you don't know how to word certain things, especially with these particular audiences, you could offend more people than you attract, which is clearly the opposite of what you want to be doing. Okay. So what I'm talking about is, you know, healthcare copy, which I do more fitness and health, healthcare, I'm thinking like hospitals, um, that, you know, that's, there's a whole other thing involved with all of that, which I'm not going to get into as far as, you know, how to really handle that. I'm talking more about the health topics that most people can relate to and like gyms and fitness, um, fitness chains and that sort of thing. But within that audience, there's like the over 50 audience. Now, this is a particular love of mine because for one, I am in that whole niche and I've made mistakes when I was much younger, didn't know what I was doing and use words that I would not use today. And that's what I want to get into is how do you, you know, know what to say and how to say it. Um, another area is financial services, which I'm not going to get into, but if you talk to, I, I interviewed someone not long ago about how to write for the financial industry. So you can go back to that podcast um, if you'd like. But that is, those are the real sensitive issues. When you're talking about money, when you're talking about health, especially in fitness, when it comes to like weight loss, or again, over 50, that audience is very, you have to be really careful with how you word things. So for the sake of simplicity, I want to talk really about two specific copywriting formulas. The most popular one, which I've talked about is pain agitation solution. And the reason I'm bringing this up now is because when we talk about this formula, it's, you know, people say, oh, pain, I don't want to make people feel bad. It's not making people feel bad. Well, you shouldn't be making people feel bad. But the pain part is that the person who finds you or your service or your business found you for a reason. They were looking for something. They needed a solution to a problem. So that's the pain, okay? It's not anything they don't know about. They Unless they're, if you're targeting people who are completely unaware of your service, but that's something that's really hard to, to get to attract because people don't even know they have a problem. They're not looking for anything. So I'm not going to get into all of that because most people who are going to find you are going to be in the pain level of awareness. They, they know they have a problem. And then the agitation part is that you kind of, you don't want them to forget about that pain. So people will say, for example, I want to lose weight. And then when they start talking about it, they end up talking themselves out of it. So the agitation part of this formula is to really kind of put a little lemon juice on that paper cut and make them remember what it is that they said and, you know, make it sound like, okay, this was your idea to begin with. Okay. And then the solution is, okay, it's not your fault. And here's how I can possibly help you. So that's what the three uh, most popular, well, it's the one most popular form of the three steps. And so, you know, I gave kind of an example here of some of the subjects that you deal with. And th this is more for consumer, but the B2C, the business to consumer really does influence the B2B. Like what are, so just as an example, 
you know, B2C would be if you are selling um, gym memberships and you're direct, you're selling directly to the consumer, where B2B would be if, if you're selling software, for example, to a chain of gyms, that would be B2B. But the, the whole, the B2C problem informs the B2B. So you really need to be aware of what people are having problems with. And so that's why I included, included these two women. They're of, and here's where the words come in, right? You never want to say elderly. I don't care if someone is 150 years old, you never use that word in copy and speaking. It's just offensive on every level, but I hear it and I see it way too often. It's always by someone who is way younger. Okay. So you know, you can say senior, I don't even like that. I would stick with something like, you know, over 50, people over 50 or over 60 or anything that just doesn't put any kind of opinion on what you're saying about the age group is safe. And then, you know, someone who has weight to lose, they know they're coming to you because they know they want to lose weight. And this is all the weight loss drugs aside. I'm not getting into all that. I'm saying if they want it, well, even if they're on the weight loss drugs, they still don't want to be losing a lot of muscle and they may be looking for a way to keep the muscle, lose the fat, which I used to hear all the time as a personal trainer. And so they come to you, they're frustrated. So this guy is sitting in front of that ball. He's, you know, maybe just had an awful workout or maybe he just feels like he can't do it. You need to have empathy with any of these groups because, and maybe you're one of them. I think about the time, the, a time that you had a problem that maybe was borderline embarrassing, but you needed to have a solution to it. And so you don't want to read something that makes you feel worse. But if it's something that reminds you of what you're looking for, and this person or service or company has a solution, you'll listen. But you also want to know that they understand where you're coming from. So for example, I ran a, uh, I had a course for women over 50 several years ago, and it was a fitness course. And all the copy, this is before I became a copywriter, so I didn't really know what I was doing. But the one thing that I did know was to not make people feel bad. And so uh, some of it was actually kind of forced because I used to write Facebook ads and Facebook is very, I don't know, I haven't written an ad for them in a while for this audience, but at the time they were so strict and I believe they still are about what images you could show. And for example, I had an image of a tape measure. It wasn't wrapped around anybody's body. It was just simply a tape measure for the image and Facebook banned it. They said, nope, that makes people feel bad. So that's kind of an extreme in my opinion, but you don't want to have people feeling shame. You know, you want to have them feel like there's hope and okay, this is where we're starting from. You need to be empathic. And this is also why it's really popular for trainers who have been overweight. I've had some weight to lose in the past. I had to lose about 20 pounds years ago. So I kind of know, but there's people who have to lose a lot of weight and they're not going to think that I could relate. But when you find someone who says, you know, I've lost a hundred pounds, and there's somebody else who has to lose 100 pounds and they're feeling hopeless, they're going to be more likely to listen to that person because they know they've been through the experience and they know what it feels like. Okay, so the PAS is the pain agitation solution. And then this is just to show that the, the you know, you want to have maybe there's a software company that has the solution. And so B2C is when you know sensitivity can make or break your campaign and this is the direct ads and then b2b is you don't again even addressing problems to a business you don't want to have them cause you know be feeling like unnecessary stress like wow we are real losers i mean that's never the goal and so what is the best way really to find what you know, how do you find the right words? And that's, you have to talk to your audience. And you hear this all the time and it's like, well, what does it mean? It's never more important than for this audience. So if you are talking to people, so again, I'll use the example, women over 50, the, the key with this audience I have found, and this is from years of working with as both as a one-on-one -on -one personal trainer and also writing for all these magazines where I had to interview a lot of women in this age group, 
men and women, but mostly women. And they talk about things that they that would be different than what you might think if you're younger and you're, you know, when you're, for example, you're in your thirties, everything's about, I want to get flat abs. And I had clients like that too. You know, I want to, you know, tighten up this and I want to get muscle definition in my arms. For women over 50, that's not the biggest issue usually, unless they're already pretty fit and then they just want to fine tune their their routine or their their body in some way. But for the most part, it's about, you know, getting up off the ground if they're playing with their grandchildren, just functional things like that. Being able to get, being able to walk upstairs without knee pain, which I can totally relate to, which is why I live in a single story house right now, because knees are one of the things that go, the collagen, you know, especially if you've been working out for as many years as I have, it, it wears away and it's painful. So what is it you want to talk to them about? What is it that is their biggest challenge or their biggest challenges? One of my favorite questions that I ask people when I'm interviewing them for, for copy for a client is, okay, walk me through your day and tell me, you know, when this challenge comes up. So for example, you know, I get up out of bed and my knees already hurt. So, you know, I, and they'll just take you through, like I, I, maybe I'm getting grocers out of the car and I realized that, you know, my, I just tweaked my back. Um, it doesn't always have to be like that. It could just be, they're seeing that they're not as fast as they used to be. And there's, there's a physiological reason for that, which is that the, the muscle fibers, you start to lose the muscle fibers that provide power. And people think power, they think of like, I don't know, X-Men or something, but power is really, it's, if I'm remembering right, speed um, times with strength. Okay. So this means you're at a crosswalk, the light turns green for you to walk across. You need to be able to move across that street. And if you're really slow because you have muscle loss or just loss of strength, that could be an issue. And maybe it's not till you're 80 years old. It could be till, you know, but there's other things that can crop up. So my, my whole point is that you need to talk to people, find out what is it that is really affecting you. You need to talk to a lot of people until the way, you know, you have enough, you know, as speaking as a copywriter now, the way that, you know, you have enough people to talk to is when you start hearing the same things over and over. And it's like, okay, I got it. This is like a big issue. So, and the same thing would hold true for any other sensitive issue. Like I mentioned, um, you know, the, the financial business, I don't write financial copy for the most part, or even security um, services. Those are also sensitive topics, but those are, again, you want to talk to people who are affected by the problem that you solve with your product or service. And so another thing, another thought rather, is that you could use a different formula, obviously. I mean, problem agitation solution, PAS is the easiest one to remember. And it, I use it all the time just because of that. But sometimes it's not the best choice. There is something like 25 different, it's probably more than that, uh, different copywriting formulas. But another popular one is AIDA, A-I-D-A for attention, interest, desire, and action. That may be a better choice for something that's super sensitive. So it focuses on the audience, but doesn't agitate as much as PAS. So if you're breaking it down, you want to get their attention. So just off the top of my head, um, and by the way, using humor could be the best thing you ever did because people, people respond to humor and they, it doesn't have to be, I mean, you have to be careful. You know, I've interviewed people on my podcast about using humor and you want to make sure it's humor that is funny, but in a way that doesn't offend again. I and mean, that's always the, the goal, right? So attention could be, and I used to use this with my, my copy for my women over 50 is, you know, tired of lying on the bed, trying to zip up your jeans. And maybe that's not an over 50 problem, but something like that. Um, cause women over 50 usually aren't wearing, usually aren't wearing pants that are that tight. They could be, but something along those lines, like something that kind of conjures up a comical 
you know, scenario in their mind where they can like, yeah, I know what that's like. Um, and then interest would be, what is it that maybe it's a, a starling statistic? You know, did you know that, um, that weight gain after 50 is not inevitable? Um, something like that. Cause that used to surprise a lot of people. The weight distribution for women in this age group does change, but weight gain is not necessary. Um, and so maybe that's something that sparks their interest. And then desire would be, how would you like to weigh what you did, you know, 10 years ago or something reasonable, but something that attainable, but yet they desire it. There's a desire. And the action would be, you know, here's a solution that, or here's, you know, and you present the solution that could be something that would help you um, through this. And so that's the ADA approach. And again, that, so that's something that may be easier to do. I and mean, you know, a company that does it, they're not fitness related, but Apple does this really well. If you look at their copy, they're always get the headline, which is considered like the gold standard for copywriters. The headline is always something that really grabs you and um, you can't forget. And this is just the, the slide here. If you're watching the video on how humor you know, works. Like you're just frustrated. You feel silly and <laughs> that kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, um, Apple uses that a lot and they, you know, the headline is always something that's really going to grab you. But then if you notice, even if it's a funny headline, because a lot of times it is, that's where the humor ends though. And then they get super serious and they talk about the functionality, but still it's in a way that's conversational so they don't really lose that complete casualness, but they do capture your attention. So those are the kinds of ads that, you know, for people and even for whether you're B2B or B2C, it doesn't matter. You know, having a headline that captures attention and has a little humor in it is always popular because people love to laugh. I mean, I've worked with people in all walks of life. I've interviewed people in all walks of life. Very few have had no sense of humor. And if they've had no sense of humor, the conversation usually gets cut pretty short. That goes for my friends too. So I hope you found this helpful. So just when you're writing for a sensitive audience, just make sure that you know how to talk to them. What are the words that they use? And even ask them, what would be something that would attract you in an ad versus something that would upset you. What are words that you hear that maybe you don't like to hear or that you don't think refer to you and you would take offense to? So just out and out asking people is always the best way. So if PAS formula is not a fit, consider using ADA. So I'd love to hear what you thought about today's topic and don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for our next episode. And as always, you can always reach out to me at lynda at thecopyworks.com. And until next week, we'll see you then.